What public health officials have told me is that cases are rising throughout Arizona, including communities that did not have any protests. If we look at to the data to the extent we have it, particularly with fatalities, it seems to be most linked to indoor transmission. So certainly any contact can spread COVID-19 and we need to be concerned. But epidemiologists are telling me that if you look at the data, it tracks most closely with lifting the stay at home order. Well, uh, Dr. Zhao, let me bring you in on that because that, that does seem to be um, a key point possibly. Is that your sense of this, the difference between indoor and outdoor transmission? transmission? Do you think that's significant? And if so, how should that be shaping what is and isn't open, where people are and aren't gathering? Yeah, so thanks for having me on. And the mayor clearly has some very good epidemiologists that she's listening to, because pretty much everything she said was uh, a, was right, is how I see it. Um, what we know is that large gatherings are dangerous, so they're risky, um, but they're much more risky when you have large numbers of people getting together indoors than when they're outdoors. Um, we also know that masks really do help reduce the risk. And, in, and my best assessment of what's going on in Arizona is, as the mayor said, um, the, the state really opened up too early, did not meet the CDC guidelines, did not meet the White House guidelines. And uh, and, and it was a risk. And, and what we are seeing, unfortunately, is uh, a spike in cases. And I think the key here is to intervene now so that we don't have to think about a shelter in place order down the road. Uh, there's a narrow window of, uh, window of action here and we've got to take it. When you say there's a narrow window of action, you don't want to return to shelter in place. What would you be talking about? Well, so I think things that create large indoor gatherings. I mean, nightclubs, you know, may be a lot of fun, but uh, if, uh, but I wouldn't do it. So right now, I would move backwards. I would, uh, I would get rid of the nightclubs. I would really think about how many people you're willing to have in indoor restaurants, and and think about mostly just moving to outdoor spaces. Uh, any large indoor gatherings, I think, is a very risky thing. And then I would push absolutely for a universal masking. I think that's a really critical thing. So if we do all of those things uh, in Arizona, I think there's a pretty good chance that we can slow this down and avoid getting to a place where the only choice left is shelter in place. So, Mary, in terms of what you think, where things should be in Arizona now, where you'd like to see them in Arizona right now, is there an argument here for thinking of more ways to open up outdoor spaces to give people a possibility to do some activities there with masks, with distancing, but to be outside as opposed to indoor? Part of it is just sending a message to our residents that they have to take this seriously. When I talk to people, particularly people who do not follow the news closely, they are stunned by the increase and that the fact that Arizona is a hot spot. I think many people in my community thought this would follow the patterns of the seasonal flu spread where it really declines during summer. And so they thought we were home free. The message I am trying to send as mayor is not only are we not home free, we are in the midst of a crisis. I would encourage people if they can find good ways to spend time outdoors that they do so, uh, particularly a great morning hike. Phoenix has more acres of parks than any other city in the United States. So there are good opportunities as long as you practice social distancing. There's also President Trump today. He downplayed concerns about the rise in coronavirus cases that are being seen in some places. He attributed this to the increase in testing. Take a listen. Our testing is so far advanced, it's so much bigger and better than any other country that we're going to have more cases. We're always going to have more cases. And as I said this morning, that's probably the downside of having good testing is you find a lot of cases that other countries who don't even test don't have. If you don't test, you don't have any cases. If we stop testing right now, we'd have very few cases, if any. Uh, Dr. Jha, I, I looked at this, too. I mentioned this at the beginning. Uh, the number of tests per day right now is sitting at about 461,000 for the last two weeks. I, I can remember being in this studio maybe about two months ago looking at numbers like 30, 40, 50,000 a day. So testing has come a long way here in a short time. Uh, is that, is, I know at the beginning, it's fair to say there were all sorts of issues. But is testing right now, do you think, getting closer to where it needs to be? Yeah, so testing initially was abysmal, and now I would say it's inadequate.
Uh, it's not anywhere near where it needs to be. I don't know any expert who thinks that 400,000 tests a day for a country our size and for the outbreak our size is, is enough. And, and the estimates of how much we should be doing vary from about 1 million a day to about 5 million a day. So we're still pretty far behind. And, you know, one of the things I, I hear the president and I understand what he's saying on a per capita basis, uh, there are many countries, many advanced countries that are doing a lot more testing than we are. So that's not the explanation. The reason we have more cases is not because we're doing more testing. It's because we actually have more infections in this country and not identifying them and closing our eyes won't make them go away. It just will mean we won't know about them until our hospitals get overwhelmed. So we need to be doing more testing, not less testing. All right, Dr. Rashis Cha and Mayor Kate Gallego of Phoenix, Arizona. Thank you both for being with us. Appreciate that.